Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an interesting quadratic equation. Now why do I call this interesting? Later on you're going to see different versions of this problem. Uh, I tried the cubic version, it didn't come out well. But anyways, let's go ahead and see how we can solve this uh, with different methods. So we have z plus i to the second power equals z times i. Remember earlier I had made a video, probably a long time ago, which was the linear version of this problem, which was z plus i equals zi. So go ahead and check it out if you haven't done so, but I'll just proceed with this one. So let's see if we can solve this problem in two different methods, and I'll start with the first method, which is going to be a little bit painful, so bear with me. I want to use the polar form. So l let me know if you have any quick ideas about how it can be solved with the polar form because this seemed a little bit painful to me. Anyways, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to write z in polar form, so it's going to look like r times e to the power i theta, right? What about e or i, right? i can be written as, obviously, e to the power i times pi over 2, at least that's the principal value that we can use. And then I'm going to put these two together. But here's the thing. I don't want to just use these forms first because I want to kind of bake the i into z and see if we can do that. I'm not even sure if this is going to work, but that's going to be experimental, which is the fun part. Anyways, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write this z as r times cosine theta plus i sine theta. And then add the i as just i. So now, we have different options here. The modulus can be 1 or not 1. So we don't know yet, right? But if you take the absolute value on both sides, here's what I'm getting. The absolute value of z plus i squared is going to be the absolute value of z i, which is the absolute value of z times 1, which is the absolute value of z. So it looks like we have this equation. And since this is not negative, I could probably forget about the square and think of it as follows. And I'm hoping that from here, the absolute value of z is going to be 1. So can I just get rid of the r for now? And what happens if we can't? That's a different story. But I want to show you my um, you know, approach here. And my approach is going to be to bake the i into this expression. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and first factor out an i. So that's going to give me sine theta plus 1. Now, how do you bake that into this? So be, I want to get something like a cosine alpha plus i sine alpha. To be able to do that, I'm going to use the double angles or half angles. If I had the sine and cosine switched, it would be easy because then I could use uh, the double angle formula. By the way, there are three versions of cosine, but this is a sine. But here's what we can do. We can define another angle like alpha such that alpha plus theta is equal to pi over 2 so that sine theta is going to be cosine alpha and cosine theta is going to be sine alpha. You see, there's always a solution. Now let's go ahead and do the switch. We're going to get sine alpha plus i times 1 plus cosine of alpha. Now we can go ahead and simplify this. All right, ready? And then at the end, obviously, we can go ahead and back substitute once we know what uh, alpha is going to look like or what our number is going to look like. Okay? Now, which uh, formula of cosine alpha should I use? And you got to think double angle. So this is kind of like a 2 times an angle, like 2x. And so from here, x would be half of alpha, right? So here's what I'm trying to do then. I want to use, I want to use 2 cosine squared half of alpha minus 1, right? Because th this way I'm going to be able to simplify or cancel out the 1. And of course for sine alpha you don't really have a choice. you got to use the good old formula 2 sine alpha over 2 times cosine alpha over 2. Again, this is the same thing as 2 sine x cosine x, but that's for sine 2x, which is alpha, so x would be half of alpha. Make sense? Okay, awesome. Now let's go ahead and plug this all in. We're going to get i times 1 plus 2 cosine squared alpha over 2 minus 1. And now the 1 is going to cancel out, leaving us with something nicer. But notice that 2 cosine alpha over 2 
is a common factor. So let's go ahead and take that out. And then inside, we're going to have sine alpha over 2 plus i times cosine alpha over 2. Awesome. Well, not so awesome because we still got them switched around, right? Sine and cosine are supposed to be switched. But don't worry, we can do that again with a pi over 2 trick. But this is with the, you know, what is that called? The, the i kind of mixed in to this mess. So how do we write this in polar form? We're almost there. Let's go ahead and write this as follows then. 2 cosine alpha over 2. By the way, this is a constant. That's the modulus, right? Because sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. Great. Now, I can write the sine alpha over 2 as cosine pi over 2 minus alpha over 2, which you can, again, make a common denominator to if you want. I times sine of pi over 2 minus alpha over 2. Okay? So, great. I got cosine something plus I sine the same thing. So, you can call this um, beta, I don't know, something like this. And now we have cosine beta plus I sine beta, which is e to the power I beta. That's what's beautiful about Euler's formula. That's why Euler is the best. Okay, people say it's, he is one of the best mathematicians, but in my opinion, he is the best ever. Anyways, so now we got the following, some constant r. 2 cosine alpha over 2 multiply by e to the power i beta, which is i times pi over 2 minus alpha over 2. Since we know what alpha is, at least, right, we can go ahead and hopefully go from there. But what do we have on the right-hand side? Zi. Uh-oh, that's going to be painful, right? No, not really, because we know something for about z. Z was written as, what did we write z as? <laughs> okay, we wrote it as cosine theta plus i sine theta, this was our z, right? But now, we kind of need to turn it into, um, you know, well, it's no big deal, we can use theta. So, z is basically e to the power i theta. Make sense? Great. So, from here, we're going to have to think about it, because we have e to the power i something on one side, but we don't, we also have a 2 cosine alpha over 2. So, I'm thinking 2 cosine alpha over 2 is probably 1 because I don't have an r here. In other words, the modulus, if you absolute value both sides, you're going to get absolutely 1 on the right-hand side. Therefore, this guy is supposed to equal 1. And can it be negative 1? Possibly. But let's go ahead and see where we go from here. I'm just going to show you this part, and then hopefully you can take it from here. Cosine alpha over 2 times 2 is 1. From here you get cosine alpha over 2 is equal to 1 half. And then let's just uh, find one of the values of alpha. Alpha over 2 can be cosine 60 is 1 half, which is pi over 3. And yes, alpha can be 2 pi over 3. That's just one of the values, but at least we know it's going to work. But wait a minute, what am I getting with that, right? If I got alpha, did I find theta? Here's the thing. Once I get that value, I also know that these are going to be equal to each other. So in other words, pi over 2 minus alpha over 2 is equal to theta. Awesome. So from here, if alpha is 2 pi over 3, half of it is going to be pi over 3. So pi over 2 minus pi over 3 is going to equal theta, which means theta can be written as pi over 6. And if theta is pi over 6 and r is 1, then z can be written as cosine pi over 6, which is uh, root 3 over 2, plus i times 1 half. So that should be one of the solutions. But let's go ahead and take a look at the second method, which kind of uh, finds the answer more directly, okay, without the polar form. As you can see, polar form is a little painful here, but let's see what we can do with the other method. The other method is fairly simple. You're just going to expand it, z squared plus 2iz plus i squared, which is minus 1, equals zi or iz. And now put these two together, z squared. Oh, by the way, you can take square roots, but I don't think that's going to help. Uh, anyways, I'm going to write it as z squared plus iz minus 1. I subtracted iz. And this is equal to 0. Let's use the quadratic formula, negative b, plus minus the square root of b squared, which is negative 1, i squared, minus 4ac. That's going to be a plus 4. And ta-da, we get the square root of 3 there, which is real. And z can be written as root 3 with a plus minus sign, minus i divided by 2, which means we have two solutions because this is quadratic. And one of them is root 3 over 2 
minus 1 half i. The other one is negative root 3 over 2 minus 1 half i. And this does not agree with the solution we found, so there must be something wrong with the first method, but that's for you to find out. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care, and bye-bye.